Battery operated power sources are absolutely awesome if used correctly, you know, in the right watts. We did a video not too long ago on this unit demonstrating what it'll do and what it won't do because sometimes people have a little bit of high expectations. As long as you have proper expectations with this and have a use for it, they are amazing. Picking them up can be kind of interesting and there are ways to get them cheaper. I'm gonna walk you through this unit, tell you how you might be able to get this one at a good deal. Stay tuned. First, I have zero affiliation with Ocatel or anybody that's out there like this. We had the ability to test this unit early, just tell them what we thought about it. And I really enjoy doing that, so I don't want any part of the money portion of this, and I don't want you to take any more risk in getting this than what you're comfortable with. This guy is actually gonna go on Kickstarter, and I know it seems weird, but a lot of these battery powered inverters seem to start there. The first 100 people can get this for 99 bucks. Now on Ocatel's site, there's also a coupon where you can pay $50 to get in and then they'll give you a hundred back later. I'm leaving all that up to you if that's something you want to risk. Either way, I think it's cool that you can get this stuff at a lesser price because I believe standard pricing on this is going to be $16.99. So that's a significant deal if you can get in early. I'll leave some links below. Again, no pressure, I'm just letting you know. If you didn't get in on this one, you can also send me a message. I got another one coming up if you need to get in earlier. Uh, that's just something that I think is cool and I like to have this stuff around. It just seems to give me peace of mind and the ability to carry it with me. Although this is not a light unit. It is 51 volts, 2000 watt hour, and it is a 2000 watt AC inverter with a 4000 watt surge. So let's come in, take a look at this and do some testing. The Ocatel P2001 is a very simple machine with very few options, but just enough to get you by and have everything work without being too confusing. You have a power button to turn it on and off, and then each little power bank here turns on and off with a push of a button. There's a light that turns on, and there's also an audible beep, so you know that something is happening. On the front, it tells you the approximate discharge hours remaining. That will also turn to minutes if you get down to a really high draw or the battery gets low. Nice circular gauge there for your battery power that's remaining, currently at 56%. Then you have your output watts and input watts. So we can input via a AC cord, we can inf input via a solar panel. We'll show you that on the other side. And then we have our AC output on this side. So if we turn this guy on, you'll hear a click and I really don't have anything plugged in at this point in time other than just my multimeter in a few chargers. No batteries are physically pushed down, so our output watts still remain very low. We have 110 volts at 60 hertz, so that's good. Everything for the USA here is great. Now you can see this discharge remaining went down to 35 hours just with turning on the AC power, and that's an efficiency thing. Just powering up the inverter takes about 20% of that battery away, or it's gonna depend on heat range, but that's something to always look at when you're looking at these units. All we have to do now is kinda click some things in and start to do some charging. We'll watch our output watts go up. So we are at 432 watts out. Not much is changing with the volts. We can turn on our handy dandy solar powered generator drainer. We're up to 1600 output watts without an issue, 30 minutes remaining as far as the charge, which lines just about up with the 10 to 15% efficiency that they have going on. That's gonna be a loss going from DC to AC. So we'll try to do a quick test of the peak surge here. We'll turn on our heat gun. 
to about 1400 watts out. Hit this circular saw that should take us over 2000 watts. And I know that was a lot of noise for a long period of time, but it was nice to see that this unit could actually hold 22, 2300 watts for a significant period of time and not kick out. So it's sort of overproducing what it's stated to, and I think that's a big deal. Although putting that much or pulling that much out is kind of a lot to do for this size unit. You're obviously going to be down in the less than an hour range, even with a full battery. So it's not really designed for doing that all day. The only cable that is included with this is going to be basically a standard computer type cable. All the charging is located inside this unit. On one side, you have the solar power adapter and a place to plug this in. Now you can fully charge this guy in about two hours with no issue at all, which I think is absolutely amazing. And you can charge it via solar or AC and use all the plugs on going out. This is not set up to be a battery backup unit, so it's be constantly running. It'll physically turn itself off at some point in time. So if we come in close, we still have our heat gun running along with the battery charger going. We're at about 109.9 volts, still running at 60 hertz, so everything is good. We're gonna plug in the AC to it again. You can see the supercharge light comes on telling us we're charging we have input watts of about 1668 we have output of 1568 so we're actually putting in 100 watts to the batteries as it flows through but you can see the output voltage has increased from 110 to 117. now i have about 126 volts in the shop so it's not fully just passing through it's still going through the inverter which is interesting to me, but it, it does bump it up a little bit. So if you're interested in this style 2000 watt unit and you really need to power something up and you don't know what it can do, look in the description. There's a link there to a video about what these can power. And I'm not trying to be negative about what they can power. I just want to be realistic so that people actually say, hey, I bought it and I'm happy with it rather than I bought it and it doesn't do half of what I thought it would. We get a lot of comments on these and people thinking this is gonna power their whole house. It won't. In, in fact, it won't even power your whole RV. And in fact, I always caution people what they plug in here. Now, most computers, everything is gonna be just fine. But in certain cases, I have had some of these not power things like they should and blow certain things up. This is a pure sine wave unit. If you're looking for one to power delicate electronics, make sure you get a pure sine wave unit. Look at the battery watt hours that you have. Look at this type of battery. Some of the tool systems are nice. If you get a tool battery, you can use it on other tools, but I haven't had great luck with a lot of them in these LifePo batteries seem to really withstand the test of time better than a tool battery would for this type of output. And I'm gonna have more information. I'll actually show you the battery systems inside some of these coming up very soon. So please subscribe to the channel, leave comments below, be careful on Kickstarter, do what's comfortable for you, try to get a good deal on this stuff, but know that there's more coming. If you're interested in that, you can always contact me on it. I'll try to keep you in the loop, but make sure you look at the date of the video because I only really have stuff coming up for the next week and a half or so. So check that out. Talk to you soon.